All right, folks, we're back with part two of the uh, Molesburg panel. Criminal defense attorney Janet Johnson and uh, attorney Adam Thompson. All right, let's, uh, let, let's talk about um, immigration right now. And there's a report out there that Barack Obama may be planning uh, to, uh, to grant a special status to uh, uh, children from Honduras uh, to allow them to come to this country without having to trek through Mexico and to be given a sanctuary here in the U.S., I mean, this is this is just more insanity. And how we, he would do this is by picking up his pen and signing it into law. Um, Adam, I mean, this man will stop at nothing to accomplish his goal. And obviously, getting as many people into this country uh, from other countries is his goal. You mean he's he's going to do another executive order, Steve? Another executive order? <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't know where it starts, where it ends. I mean, the bottom line is this. You want to protect young children and their safety, but bringing them in from Honduras, I understand if there's some political situation going on there and their lives are in danger and they were to flee and escape, we would hopefully try to offer them some sanctuary here and protect them. But just to say we're going to pick them up and bring them over, this gets a little askewed at this point. Janet? This is Bush's law. That's exactly what this is. Bush's law made a preference for Mexican children. This just equals the playing field. But it's the law Bush signed and that was unanimously passing children who are victims of sex trafficking. Is that what you're, you don't want those children to get to come to America? This is not, this has not, they, wait, wait, this has nothing to do with sex trafficking. I'm reading here from the New York Times um, and it says that um, he's considering whether to allow hundreds of minors and young adults from Honduras into the U.S. without making the dangerous trek. Um, if approved, it would direct the government to screen thousands of children and youths in Honduras to see if they can enter the U.S. as refugees uh, on emergency humanitarian grounds. It has nothing to do with sex trafficking. It does. Right, that's, a my, that's my understanding, Steve. Wait, 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 Janet, Janet, one, one, at a, one at a time. Janet, go. That's one of the emergency humanitarian grounds. I mean, it's not just because you don't like it in Honduras. That's not considered an emergency humanitarian ground. That is one of them. Abuse, being a political refugee, those are emergency grounds. And all that says is they don't have to walk through Mexico and risk death. I don't know how we can object to that. How do you turn that into a bad thing? Uh, Adam, Adam, I, I, well, I'll tell well, you, Adam, I, think, I mean, first of all, I this is... Well, wait, wait, Adam, 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 let me, let me just say... Uh, that uh, they, they would elevate Honduras to the level of uh, Haiti and Vietnam, where such programs have been conducted in the past uh, amid war and major crisis. Again, this has nothing to do with sex trafficking per se. And you know what? Hey, too bad we can't get every child from Gaza into this country, too. And every place where there's slavery in Africa and starvation, let's get every one of those kids in here, too, right? Everybody. But that's you know that? the Wilson Doctrine. I mean, that's our hemisphere. This is our hemisphere. This is our continent. Oh, it's our responsibility because it's our hemisphere. Go ahead, uh, Adam. I was going to say, Steve, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. There's lots of children worldwide that need help. And how you figure out who to bring over and who you give priority to, once you give priority to one group over another, there's going to be a million other people screaming out, why do they get preference over this group? The bottom so line is everybody, everybody wants to help children. If, if the children of Honduras are obviously victims of horrific criminal acts, we're going to do everything we can to protect them. How we implement that to make it work and fair, that's what the question really is, and that's what needs to be addressed. All right, we're going to have to end it on that note, guys uh, and ladies. I appreciate it. Janet Johnson and uh, Adam Thompson, thank you both very much. Have a great weekend. You too, you too Steve. Always right. a pleasure. All right, folks, and we'll be back with the associate editor for HotAir.com, Noah Rothman, and more of the Steve Molesberg Show. You know it, you love it. But first, this hour's American Moment, we take a look back at General MacArthur's invasion of Inchon. On September 15, 1950, General of the Army and Commander-in-Chief of the United Nations Forces, Douglas MacArthur, launched a surprise amphibious attack against the Communist North Korean Army at the Bay of Inchon in South Korea. Approximately three months earlier, the North invaded South Korea and soon captured its capital, Seoul. MacArthur, against the advice of his military advisors, chose Inchon for his counterattack. The move was risky. Incheon was heavily fortified, and American soldiers would face towering cliffs on its beaches. 
His maneuver caught the enemy completely by surprise. MacArthur quickly cut the North Korean army in half as their beleaguered army hastily beat a retreat north. For the moment, the government of South Korea had been saved. In an address to a joint session of Congress, General Douglas MacArthur uttered those famous words, old soldiers never die, they just fade away, and then added, I now close my military career and just fade away. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.